So how did I become a data engineering manager for data science? Now I'm gonna really speak not about my current job, but my previous tenure in Paramount Global. I was really hired in Paramount Global uh, from Singapore. At that point of time, they were called not exactly Paramount Global because Paramount Global is actually a combination or merger between Viacom and CBS. So I was hired in CBS Interactive. I'll just call it CBS I for short in April 6, 2011. And I was vying for a work role for SEO. At that point of time, SEO really stands for Search Engine Optimization. At that point of time, SEO is a very hot topic. Everybody was just going into how can you make money through Google AdSense and all of that. How can you be top five or top 10 search results in Google? And I was very interested in that. Just nice that CBS, I opened up a role for me to go into. And at a point of time, when I went into CBS, I, it was great because it fulfilled a few of my prior requests before. I still remember one of my prior requests then was to be part of GameSpot uh, when I was much younger, when I was 14 years old. And I didn't realize that in CBS, I, GameSpot was there at that stage. And it was beautiful to be there. So one of my main perks that I received from CBS, I, in regards to my role was I get to learn a lot of cutting edge technologies that not many people were exposed to at the point of time. One of it is Hadoop Map Reduce. Now, today, Hadoop Map Reduce is everywhere. You can spin up in AWS, it'll be there. But 10 years back, right, it was very, very hard to be involved in Hadoop because unless your company is rich enough to you know, spin up some servers in your server room, spin up the whole Hadoop system, and it's not easy to install these systems, uh, you probably are not going to get exposed to map reduce, get exposed to big data, get exposed to how you can leverage value out of this big data. So um, very early on, I was exposed to map reduce and recommendation systems, even search engines like Elasticsearch. Uh, I used to be a frequent contributor of Stack Overflow in Elasticsearch. Also, being in Adobe Analytics as well, uh, because my team and my, my manager, my director, were the pioneers of Adobe Analytics uh, uh, for Paramount Global or CBS I back then. And they were introducing this uh, solution to the worldwide rollout uh, for CBS I. At that point of time, it's very, very good because it gives a very good breath in terms of what is out there for the data world, right? Web traffic, analytics, big data, recommendation systems, search engine. It was a treat to be exposed to all these things so that I can learn and be efficient and effective to my role. However, being in an offshore company in Singapore, growth opportunities in promotions were few. Now, for some reason, even though I have contributed in some big projects, and some of these big projects have a lot of good impact in terms of business value, uh, you can even attribute it to, to, to numbers, but promotion was elusive. Promotion wasn't accessible at all. Somehow, it's very hard to get promoted as an engineer in an offshore company. It's weird. CBSI then always have reorganizations. Every two, three years, it's a reorg. It hurt my career because every time there is a reorg, sometimes I would change teams, sometimes I would change managers, and sometimes I would change VPs. Every time there is a big change, it truly meant that I have to prove my worth again in a new team. And it's not good for the career because like I was thinking to myself, why do I have to keep proving myself again and again, even though I have had years of experience in engineering, I've delivered goods before, but I still need to prove myself. I still remember at a point of time, one of the VPs came from Florida, Fort Lauderdale to Singapore. It was a site visit because uh, she oversees my um, team in Singapore. And I had a Singaporean manager also uh, with me, but I had my one-on-one -on -one with her. To cut a long story short, during my one-on-one, -on -one, there was a situation in the company. The director that was hired in the United States didn't really know his work very, very well. Somehow, he wrote out a solution for Adobe Analytics. It was not done well. And my manager had to chime in because he had more experience. He had more skills in this area. He had to chime in and force a rollback and re-implement the thing again. So it caused a big hoo-ha in the company. In my one-on-one -on -one in Singapore, I literally asked my VP. I asked, why is it that we cannot promote my manager to be a director? And why do we have to hire a more 
inexperienced director in the States. So it was really weird. Her response was just like one sentence. She literally said, we needed someone in the States to do the job. It really dawned onto me that if you're not in the States, you just don't get the title. You just don't get the role, right? It's kind of sad. And if my manager who was excellent, he could deliver the goods. He wasn't even given the opportunity to promote. Then what about me? Like, I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what? Are you serious? So from that day on, I knew I had two options. Either I have to move to the States, right, within the company. If I want to flourish in my role and get promoted, now I'm not asking for a very big promotion. It's just from a normal data engineer to a senior at the part time, right? And what is my career path? But even that was not very apparent. It was quite elusive. So I had two options. I should just further my career in the States if I'm given the opportunity to move from Singapore to the States or I should just leave for greener pastures because I can work all day and I don't get my career growth. Then what's the point, right? So at a point of time, I was really, really thinking, okay, before I leave, I wanted to have my first business trip, business trip uh, in CBSI. I made a prayer to God and say that, hey, you know, God, um, before I leave, I would, would like to have a business trip. So really, uh, shortly after I got my business trip, I was in San Francisco and that whole prayer request was fulfilled. But I had already been in the company for four years. And at that point of time, I'm really like, okay, everything is fulfilled. Now, should I leave or should I move to the States? And the VP that I had my one-on-one -on -one with, she was reorged to oversee the tech stack in CBS Sports. So she became a VP in uh, of tech in CBS Sports. I asked for an opportunity for an internal transfer. It was good because she embraced that. I also highlighted that I wanted to dive into data science if I was given the opportunity to join CBS Sports. At that point of time, I was already a part of the US Central Data team and I had a little bit of experience on data science and all that. So it happened that in CBS sports there was a an opportunity to go into gambling because they have a expert in terms of sports analytics there and they wanted to make the products for predictive sports more robust and they really want to sell stuff there which is good because it really gave me the opportunity to work on predictive analytics right so i even flew to fort lauderdale for a season i just maybe a couple of months just to get used to the place just to know what's happening out there and i was working on some of the projects there at the same time i was also interviewing for a few jobs because I wasn't sure at a point of time that I should stay in CBS Sports or should I just leave for greenest pastures, right? I already had an offer from a local telco company in Singapore that they wanted me to work there because of my Elasticsearch experience and I was already in the final interview of Facebook. So in the final interview of Facebook, usually you go through a four-hour interview. Back then it was in 2015. Yet I had to go through a four-hour interview. It was rough and eventually I selected to go to the States. Partly because during the interview process in Facebook, they were asking me, what do I do? What are you looking forward to? And I did let them know that, no, I was considering to move to the States if I don't have this Facebook opportunity. So they were perplexed because they were like, okay, in Facebook, you get to work on Asia Pacific projects. But seems like in CBS Sports, you have a more extensive portfolio that you can flourish in. So why would you want to work in Facebook when your portfolio is smaller? While in CBS Sports, it could be bigger. So they were a bit like, what are you, what are you doing here? Right? So that's one of the major decisions. Of course, um, I had my I had to deal with my own decision-making process. I have to map out certain points to know if this is a worthy exercise. Eventually, I left Singapore to go to Fort Lauderdale in Florida in August 2016. Um, slowly but surely, I was given opportunities to prove my worth then. Now, it's a little bit different because in back in being in a central team in data, for CBSI, we were subject to a lot of reorgs. I changed teams too frequently. Now that I'm in CBS Sports and the brand is stable, the product offerings they don't change. If you are working on a certain brand or a certain site or a certain product, you don't really change so much, you know. So it gave a level of consistency. It gave a lot of stability on how can I build my worth over a period of time, and they gave me a lot of opportunities to flourish. I was tasked to build the Microsoft Golf for Forecaster, which is a campaign that worth um, $1.5 million USD and the NFL Google Assistant for about $1.75 million. It's great because after I delivered the $1.75 million campaign and project, literally the day that I finished it and I delivered the goods, everything was clear.
cleared, they signed the papers, everybody was happy with the outcome. During my one-on-one -on -one with my manager, I literally put my stuff down and said, okay, if I'm not promoted, I will leave the company, right? Because I, like, I've built my portfolio, I've built my worth, I have projects under my belt, and I was confident then because, hey, I know how to build certain things, I know how to deliver the goods. I was confident that at the point of time, if I would leave for another company, another company would want me. And it can be in the States, you know what I'm saying? They were like, okay, cool. So I want to get promoted. Can I get the promotion? So at the point of time, my manager like quickly assured me saying, your promotion is on the way. Don't leave yet. And they were saying, the reason it's a little bit slow is because my jump was from a data engineer to a data engineering manager. So I didn't go through the, you know, what everybody went through. Oh, you get promoted to a senior, you get promoted to a tech lead, you get promoted then, you know, and then you prove certain things and then you become a manager. I don't have to, I didn't go through those phases. Um, they literally, you know, skip a few levels for me to be a data engineering manager for data science. And they were wanting to build a team around me to do data science projects, which is awesome. I like that, right? And this is the really the pivotal point where I thought, okay, this is really room for growth. Now, the project that really, you know, made it all possible is really the NFL Google Assistant project. It was a project where, you know, if you speak to the Google Assistant, you can actually get advice for your fantasy lineup for for the NFL camp, um, no, for the NFL season, right? So what happened was at that point of time, uh, there was this opportunity. Google opened up a campaign saying that, hey, you know, they want to really promote the Google Assistant, and they were saying, hey, you know, are there any takers? You know, a lot of other companies and teams were vying to promote this Google Assistant product through their brand, and we were one of the participants. And it was Google Assistant, so voice back then wasn't very prevalent. We have had Alexa and all that, but uh, it's not a product mainstream within CBS Sports. Um, nobody had a voice assistant product within CBS Sports then. So the company didn't really have a lot of expertise in voice products. They did some innovation on it before, but ultimately to be more confident to actually clinch this deal, they you know, started sourcing for third-party vendors to say, hey, you know, can you help us out? And I was a little bit upset then. I was pissed because I was like, okay, I was working to build this Google Assistant work for some months already. My prototype was there. I can see really good fruits out of it. And the company was thinking, okay, maybe we'll spend some money to get a third-party vendor to build this stuff for us. So I still remember that when they asked me to be part of the meeting, the third-party vendor was like, hey, you know, we can build this for you. We're going to build this for you for half a million dollars. Now, the whole project was 1.75 million. So one third of the money will go to them and all that. And I still remember I was so upset uh, because I spent so much time on it that I actually was giving an attitude. I was like saying, because what happened was when they asked me to introduce myself, I literally said to them, I'm the person who makes magic in CBS Sports. I was so pissed. They were all the directors were looking at me on like, okay, John, what's happening here and what happened was uh, please don't do what I do right if you do what I do and you get fired that's not my I mean please don't do what I do but at a point of them I just couldn't help it because I spent so much time on it I'm like good uh, like and then you just want to just outsource this right now and I'm really nearly there right and so uh, eventually they saw that my my company CBS Sports at the point of time saw that my prototype was nearly complete we submitted the prototype to Google and because Google had to you know evaluate a few other teams I think there was about 10 of them and they saw that my work was nearly there to complete and at, at a point of time I told them I was confident which actually I was confident to deliver in one month's time if they just you know, hand us the keys to the project so we clinched the deal which is awesome so it didn't matter that I had to work weekends weekdays after we clinched the deal because I have a 1.75 million dollars target board behind me like if I don't get this done I think I'll be fired seriously because you no, know, I make so much noise and <laughs> you're not really going to get away with it you know so I really worked hard and make sure and really under God's blessings because there were moments of in time where I was stuck I still remember going Going to the you no know, restroom door and I was just kneeling down and praying, hey, what on earth? I do not know how to get over this harm. Can you help me out, God? And somehow or rather, you no, know, I was just inspired and I was able to deliver deliver the goods. And it's good. So it was delivered in before the time comes, right? So before my deadline, I actually delivered the goods. Everybody was happy with the result. We got the 1.75 million deal and it was perfect. Then because it was delivered, many of the colleagues that uh, I worked with and many of the leaders, and I really appreciate them because they were started to say, hey, since Jonathan had, has this potential to get products done and deliver without any hiccups, without any downtime of, of the system and all of that, even the lawyers, one of the lawyers was saying, hey, no, it's, I think it's good to build a team around Jonathan. 
at the point of time. And I was very, very encouraged. I was feeling very, very appreciative for their support and the opportunity. Because if it was not for them and for the, the, the opportunities and the support that they, they gave, I wouldn't have been a data engineering manager today. So really, thank you to CBS Sports and all my ex-colleagues uh, and the opportunities that was given to me because I'm very, very appreciative. I don't think I can get, take this for granted and it is not entitled to me that I get these opportunities. Other people might know, could have done it, but uh, since it was given to me, I really want to express the thank you and to know that, you know, I have had a very good run in CBS before I left. And so that really wraps up on how I became a data engineering manager. I'm not going to go through my learning points from this. Uh, probably I'll do it in another video. But if you are looking to be promoted, short answer is sometimes it's just opportunities. Sometimes it's just time and place. But be prepared. Make sure that the work that you do has business impact and that you are willing to get it done. If you're not willing to get it done to prove your worth, it's going to be rough. All right. So thank you. And I'll see you for another video.